Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our second lesson on the eighth topic of Omfua, which is called X-rays. As usual, let me commence by giving the quote of the day, which states that continuous improvement is better than delayed perfection. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at the properties of X-rays, and the first property is that X-rays are not charged, therefore they are not deflected by either magnetic field or electric field unlike uh, other rays for example the cathode rays which are usually negatively charged hence can be deflected by both electric and magnetic fields the second property of x-rays is that x-rays travel at the speed of light uh, which is usually about 3.0 times 10 power 8 meters per second the third property of x-rays is that x-rays can penetrate matter that is they have a high penetrating uh, power compared to for example the cathode rays then the fourth property of X-rays is that X-rays can cause fluorescence uh, in certain substances such as the zinc sulfide. So this one simply means that when you make X-rays to be incident on a material such as the zinc sulfide, they can cause this particular zinc sulfide to glow or to simply fluoresce. Then uh, the fifth property of X-rays is that X-rays can cause photoelectric emission. That is, they can cause uh, electrons uh, to be emitted from uh, a metal plate so when x-rays are made incident on some certain method plates they can cause electrons to be ejected or emitted from those particular plates that is what we are calling the photoelectric emission then the sixth property of x-rays is that x-rays can ionize air particles that is they can cause the air particles to acquire the negative and uh, the positive charges then the seventh property of x-rays is that x-rays affect photographic film such that when x-rays are made incident on photographic films they can cause those particular photographic films to uh, to blacken or to simply uh, change sa uh, some of their uh, properties for example they can blacken when x-rays are made incident on them next we look at the differences between x-rays and cathode rays and the first difference is that x-rays are not deflected by either magnetic or electric fields the reason being that they are usually not charged Whereas for the case of cathode rays, they are usually deflected by both electric field and magnetic field. The reason being they are usually negatively charged. So a ray can only be deflected by electric and magnetic field if such a ray possesses uh, charges. Otherwise, if they are not charged, then they will not uh, have any effect uh, when they are passing through electric and magnetic field or to simply mean that they won't be deflected by either of the fields. Then the second uh, difference between X-rays and cathode rays is that X-rays are usually uh, they are highly penetrative. That is, they have a high penetrating power as compared to cathode rays, uh, which usually uh, they are not highly penetrative. So simply to say that uh, the penetrative power of X-rays is higher as compared to that of cathode rays. Then the third and last difference between X-rays and cathode rays is that X-rays have no momentum whereas cathode rays, they usually uh, have momentum. So X-rays do not have any momentum, but for the case of cathode rays, they possess momentum. Next, we look at the kinetic energy of electrons and energy of X-rays. So we are saying that the kinetic energy of the electrons in an electric field is given by kinetic energy of the electron is equals to EV. Of course, where E stands for the charge of the electron, which is usually about 1.6 times 10 power negative 19 Coulomb. Then multiplied by capital V, which stands for the accelerating voltage or the accelerating potential difference. Therefore, kinetic energy of the electron can also be given by a half Me, where Me stands for the mass of the electron, which is usually in kilogram, then multiplied by small v squared, which stands for the velocity of the electrons in meters per second. Therefore, a kinetic energy of the electron can be given by a half Me v squared, which is also equal to Ev from this particular relationship. And remember, kinetic energy is simply a type of energy. And we said that energy can also be given by HF, where H stands for the Planck's constant, and of course, F is the frequency. We were also able to show from our previous classes that frequency can be given by a C over lambda, even from uh, this particular relationship. If you make C uh, from V is equals to F lambda, we can see that frequency can be given by C over lambda. So uh, that simply means that kinetic energy can also be given by HC over lambda. 
So let's look at an example which is utilizing this particular relationship. So the example is that find the frequency of the energy of a type of X-ray whose wavelength is 10 power negative 10 meters in a vacuum. And we know that in a vacuum, uh, the velocity of light will be a C, which is 3.0 times 10 power 8 meters per second. We are also given the Planck's constant as 6.63 times 10 power negative 34 joules second. So we start by highlighting the given values. So we are given the lambda, which is the uh, wavelength as 10 power negative 10 meters. We are given the speed of light in um, the vacuum as 3.0 times 10 power 8 meters per second. We are given the Planck's constant as 6.63 times 10 power negative 34 joules second. So from V is equals to F lambda, uh, whereby the V in this particular case, which is the velocity, but we are talking of the velocity of light in the vacuum, which is simply given by a small c. So c is equals to f lambda. Therefore, if we make frequent the subject of the formula, we'll simply divide both sides of this equation by the lambda. Therefore, frequency is equals to c over lambda, or simply the where c is the speed of light, and of course, lambda is the wave length. <coughs> so we have the speed of light at 3.0 times 10 power 8 meters per second. The wavelength we are given as 10 power negative 10 meters. So this can be written as 3.0 times 10 power 8 divided by 10 power negative 10. So remember from the laws of indices that you learned in mathematics, whenever you divide, you subtract the powers. So this will be 8 minus minus 10. Of course, minus minus will give you a plus. Therefore, 8 plus 10, you will get 18. So the frequency is 3.0 times 10 power 18 hertz. Then the second part of the question wanted us to find the energy of the type of X-ray that was used. So we know that energy is equal to HF, where H is the Planck's constant. Then, of course, uh, F can also be expressed as C over uh, lambda. So H is the Planck's constant, which is 6.63 times 10 power negative 34 joules second. Then C is 3.0 times 10 power 8. Then lambda is uh, 10 power negative 10. So I can rewrite this, this as 6.63, I multiply it by 3, then times, because this one, this one is to base 10, this one is also to base 10, this one is also to base 10, I can simply combine them. Remember, uh, 10 power negative 34 is being multiplied by 10 power 8. Then we know that whenever you multiply, if the bases are the same, you simply add the power. So we have negative 34 plus 8. Then this one is on the denominator, therefore we are dividing with it. Then we know that whenever you divide, you subtract the power. So we'll have negative, negative 10. So if you feed this on your calculator, you are going to get 1.989 times 10 power, negative 15 joules, expressed in standard form and correct to four significant figures. Next. We look at our second example, which reads that an X-ray tube has an accelerating potential difference of 100 kilovolts. What is the shortest wavelength in its X-ray beam? Then we are given the Planck's constant at 6.63 times 10 power negative 34 joules a second. Charge of the electron we are given E as 1.6 times 10 power negative 19 coulombs. And the velocity of light as C as 3.0 times 10 power 8 meters per second. So we simply highlight the given values. So we are given the accelerating potential difference or the accelerating voltage as 100 uh, kilovolts. So we convert the kilovolts into the SI unit of voltage, which is simply the volts. So we know that 1,000 volts is equal to 1 kilovolt. What about uh, 100 kilovolts? So that will be 100 kilovolts over 1 kilovolt multiplied by 1,000 volts, which will give us 100,000 volts. Then we are required to find the lambda. Then we are also given the Planck's constant as 6.63 times 10 power negative 34 joules second. We are also given E, that is the charge of the electron, as 1.6 times 10 power negative 19 coulomb. We are also given the speed of light in the vacuum as 3.0 times 10 power 8 meters per second. Then we were able to show from our previous uh, slides that EV, that is the energy, the kinetic energy EV of the electron can be given by HC over lambda. Therefore, in this question, we are required to find the lambda. So I'll make lambda to be subject of the formula. So to achieve that, I'll start by eliminating the denominator by multiplying both sides by the LCM, which is the lambda. So lambda times EV is equal to HF. Remember, if I also multiply this side by lambda, lambda and lambda is going to cancel out. 
Therefore, I, if I divide both sides by EV, I'll have lambda being equal to HC over EV. So lambda is HC over EV, so which is equal to, so uh, H I'm given as 6.63 times 10 power negative 34 joules second. C I'm given as 3.0 times 10 power 8 meters per second. E I'm given as 1.6 times 10 power negative 19. Then V, uh, we have computed it as 100,000 volt. So uh, these uh, can be rewritten as, I can simply rewrite this as 6.63 times 10 power negative 34 multiplied by 3.0 times 10 power 8. Then of course divided by the same value, 1.6 times 10 power negative 19 multiplied by, uh, that is 100,000. Uh, so if I group these ones, I'll have 6.63 times 3. So I group, I'm grouping these particular numbers. Then I'm multiplying with the powers separately. So negative 34 multiplied by uh, 8. Remember when you multiply, uh, if the base are the same, if you multiply, you have to add the powers. So this is negative 34 plus 8. Then on the denominator, I have 1.6 multiplied by 100,000, then times 10 power negative 19. So if you take 6.63 times 10, then of course, uh, you are going to get 19.89. Then negative 34 plus 8, you are going to get negative 26. Then uh, uh, 1.6 times 100,000, you'll get 160,000, then times 10 power negative 19. Therefore, 19.89 divided by 160,000, then multiplied by 10 power negative 26 divided by 10 power uh, negative 19. When you divide, if the base are the same, when you divide, you subtract the powers. So you'll have negative 26 minus minus 19. This is courtesy of the loss of indices. So this will be 19.89 uh, times 160,000. You'll get 0 0.000124319 000, uh, multiplied by negative 26 minus minus will give you a plus. Uh, so this will give you power negative 7. So if you feed this on your calculator, you're going to get 1.24312 times 10 power negative 11 meters as the wavelength. Lastly, I have an exercise that I recommend that you should try at your own free time to get the understanding of the concept that you have just learned. Of course, if you have any challenges in handling any of the questions, feel free to drop a comment specifying the question that you need help in. And as usual, I'm always here to try and help where possible. So we've come to the end of our class today, but you need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that continuous improvement is better than delayed perfection. So the quote is emphasizing on the importance of breaking down our huge goals uh, into small steps that can be achieved on a daily basis. Most of us are afraid of working on our dreams just because of the huge amount of work that it takes for you to achieve your dream. But I'm here to encourage you to break down your dream into small steps that can be achieved on a daily basis. Because remember, success is simply the sum total of uh, daily uh, achievements uh, that uh, you get. And lastly, remember that great opportunities will never fit into your schedule. You have to create an extra time in order for you to harness those great opportunities that life will always be presenting to you. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you'll get notified. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.